coverage of the groundbreaking new iOS 18 customization features is brought to you by probably the last product you were expecting, a tactical pen called the Stealth Pen Pro. It's got teeth at the tip for self-defense, it's got a glass breaker at the other end, and of course, it has writing abilities fully covered. I'll talk more about this guy a bit further into the video. What's going on people, Jason here, and iOS 18 was announced recently, and I've been running the beta on my iPhone 15 Pro ever since it was available. Today I wanted to do a video covering the new customization features in iOS 18, including the brand new, never seen before ability to move app icons anywhere you want on the home screen. There's also a new paginated control center, and of course, the ability to tint all the app icons on your home screen a certain color. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get a screen recording going and I'm going to do kind of a half tutorial, half demo, showcasing these new features on my phone, but also in turn showing you how to customize using these new iOS 18 features. So the first thing we're going to talk about and the most natural place to start given the home screen you're looking at is the ability to move these app icons anywhere you want. And I can pick up Spotify and put it down here, put it here, or even put it here. Uh, all of which are locations that previously would have caused it to go to the uppermost leftmost position that was open. And now with the update, you're able to see I could put it anywhere. So that's moving app icons anywhere you want. Now let's dive into tinting them. I'm gonna hold down on the home screen, hit edit, then customize. And I can actually change the size of them while I'm here. I've got big icons, so no text, just big, uh, thick boys. And then I'm not gonna actually do that, so we'll jump back and do small then tinted uh, this is where we pick whatever color we want to apply as a universal tint across all the icons so this one actually affects all of them and the top slider is the color and the bottom slider is the saturation we don't have a ton of controls here but uh, we do have two options as for customizing things and I was actually thinking prior to getting the iOS 18 beta on my phone, but after watching the event announcing it, white, like fully desaturated on the bottom slider, and then the top slider wouldn't matter because, you know, the color is not a factor in the icons. I was thinking that would probably be the only option that would look fairly decent. And yeah, I feel like that's honestly the case where grayscale, which is what you get by, you know, applying like a white tint to everything, is probably the only thing that looks fairly decent in my mind, you know, in my opinion, uh, that is... I don't, I don't see myself really doing the tint at all. I'm going to mess around with it a little bit, though. You know, I, I, I got to give it a chance. I'm thinking like lighter colors, pastels will probably be the most promising. Yeah, the more you saturate, the worse it looks. If I had to pick one that I think is like fairly stomachable, something like this, you know, it's a light purple. It's fairly inoffensive. I wouldn't say it looks good, nor would I stick to it, but you know, it's not the worst looking thing out there. I'm, I'm sure you've seen on X, formerly known as Twitter, all the, the broken home screen setups that are practically rage bait. But yeah, so that's moving apps anywhere. You can change the size. You also got tinted app icons on here. Now let's take a look at the control center. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the Stealth Pen Pro, a tactical pen from the Atomic Bear. Tactical pens are self-defense products that serve a dual purpose. First, there's seamless writing that makes you want to take the pen everywhere you go. But also, there's self-defense features like the serrated tip and glass breaker you got on here that can help you out in sticky situations no matter where they may happen. If you need the self-defense features laid out a bit more plainly, you'd stab or strike an attacker with the sharp tip to fend them off and grab DNA. The glass breaker would help you break a car window to escape if you were trapped. But, as stealth in the name implies, the self-defense elements of this pen are designed to be discreet, so you're the only one that knows you're ready to protect yourself. The Stealth Pen Pro is built really well. It's got a proprietary polymer body, an aluminum writing tip, a stainless steel clip at the top, and a tungsten carbide glass breaker. All these premium materials fall into a design that's sleek and unassuming, making this the perfect everyday pen, self-defense features aside. As far as writing goes, you reveal the writing tip with this clicky slider that's pretty satisfying. And go to town, writing with smooth, ballpoint pen action. This pen uses Parker G2 type ink cartridges. It can also accept Fisher Space ink as well, and it comes with a Schmidt P900 medium black ink refill. As for product support with the Stealth Pen Pro, there's a free course included on using a tactical pen for self-defense, a lifetime warranty for anything besides abusing the pen, a 30-day free return policy, and international shipping. Overall, the Stealth Pen Pro is a very interesting product, and I never thought I'd say that about a pen. 
but I'm happy I got to try out a completely new product category and introduce it to y'all. Head to the link down below to pick up a Stealth Pen Pro for yourself. Yeah, so swiping down from the top of the screen, uh, top right of the screen where you normally get the control center, you know how I have one that has much larger corner radii, whereas things are more blocky previously, but they're more rounded on the corners now. Um, and if you try to swipe up from the bottom, which would normally close it, you get to like a media now playing widget. And if you're like, oh shoot, they, they added a new feature. Let me just exit out of it now. You swipe up again and it doesn't close it. You get to the third screen of the control center, which is like controls for radios and uh, airplane mode. And you actually can't get out of the control center swiping up on this page either, unless it's from the very bottom of the screen, like, you know, activating the home, get to the home screen gesture. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's really a whole new experience. Uh, it's going to take me a while to get used to not being able to swipe, but I'm going to have to tap at the bottom of the control center, or you can also do the home screen gesture. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's take a look at actually customizing this. So if you hold down on any blank space in the control center, it'll take you to this new customization screen, but I can take the flashlight and move it down to the bottom screen, mirroring timers, screen recording, and give us a little gap between the top and bottom of the control center. So that's my my first customization. Uh, and you can really customize a lot of stuff. Wherever you see this little brace or bracket on the bottom right of any icon, it means you can extend it. So if I take this flashlight icon and drag it up a little bit, I can extend it into a two by two. Uh, and then I can use that to turn the flashlight on and off with a, a bigger tap area. And actually I heard that the flashlight in iOS 18 now fades on and off, which appears to be true. It's the small things, I guess, unless you happen to be opposed to it, which I don't know why anyone would. But yeah, that's the control center. There's a lot of things that you can change or customize or move around. Really all the flexibility of like a home screen giving you different pages and the ability to put different things on different pages is now in the control center. Uh, so for instance, like the default on the second page would be this massive now playing widget. But if you wanted to, and as you probably should, you can shrink it down to a, a two by four. And this makes a lot more sense realistically because no one needs a massive widget taking up the entire second page and keeping you away from other controls that may be pushed down further uh, in the control center that you could bring up to this remaining grid that we got left here. And same with this guy right here, the signals or antennas control, you can shrink it down to its default two by two because it's taken up a lot of space given it has its own dedicated page. Uh, of course, this two by two is by default already on the first page, so there's a little bit of redundancy. You probably wouldn't want to do this, but you could remove it, rely on the one on the first page, and then add extra stuff, things you would actually find useful on this third page. Um, but yeah, it's really up to you. I'm not going to take the time in this video right now to determine uh, what the best setup is, what the best number of pages is and controls for me. Uh, but I did want to show y'all that this is a new feature in iOS 18 and there's a lot more customization than there used to be in the control center. So for those inclined, go crazy and get this thing customized and at its best for you. Now let's look at some of the smaller features uh, that iOS 18 has to offer. One of which is going to be in the app library right here. And it's this hidden folder that, as you can see, has a little eye icon. It activated face ID, scan my face, and then I'm in and I can take a look at anything that happens to be in there. Now, there's nothing in there right now, but we can go ahead and change that. Let's take the already suspiciously named X app uh, and hit require face ID. It's going to give me two options here, require face ID and hide and require face ID. And the second one puts it in that hidden folder we we're just looking at. I'll cover the other option in just a sec, uh, but for now, it's going to say hide X, uh, obscured app icon and name, no app notifications or calls. So it's not going to show up like on your lock screen or in your notifications. Uh, and we'll hit hide app and boom, it's gone. We swipe over and at the bottom of the app library, it's in the hidden folder and you can't see any of the apps that are in this folder. And during the iOS 18 announcement, I don't think they showed the hidden folder looking like this. Uh, they had it to where you could just see all the app icons inside and people were like, what's the point of the hidden folder? I mean, I guess you can't access the apps inside, but you can still see what they are. Uh, anyway, it does obscure them. That is correct, but they just didn't show it very well in the demo. And what you do is hit the folder. It authenticates with Face ID and then shows all the apps inside. And I can pop open my X. Um, not signed in at the moment, but yeah, that's the hidden app folder. And then let's, uh, we're running out of apps on this second page here. So let's kind of, you know, complete the, the effect we got going on of hiding everything on this page by hitting require face ID and then hitting the top button, which is just require face ID. 
It's authenticating just like last time, but this time it leaves the icon in the same place on the home screen. Uh, it doesn't end up in the hidden folder. And the only difference is that now when I go to open it, it's gonna say face ID required and then actually open up the app for me. So that was all the iOS 18 customization features I wanted to show off in this video. Uh, I appreciate you watching this episode of Jason Gitson iOS beta version on his phone and shows off some of the new features. Um, tinting icons, moving app icons around, locking apps, and fully decking out and customizing your control center. That's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe down below, and I'll see you in the next one.